My self-filmed cinematic YouTube videos have gained over a million views in just the last few months. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create cinematic masterpieces for YouTube to get millions of views with no help of any other filmmaker. I'm going to show you three techniques, one about scripting, one about lighting and one about editing that you can immediately apply to your videos and that don't require you to spend any money. Let's get right into it. When I decided to make my first ever cinematic video, I didn't know shit about scripting, lighting, structuring my videos. And so I just went outside to record a bunch of random clips, which took me many, many hours. I remember having no idea what I was doing. So the video turned out to be boring and obviously it didn't get any views. But then a couple of months later, I started analyzing what the other successful YouTubers were doing. And I found a structure that blew up my second ever cinematic video to over 60,000 views and then the third one to over 600,000 views. This is what it looks like. So you're gonna divide your videos into three things. A-roll, B-roll and vlog footage. So A-roll is going to be your normal filming setup where you sit down and talk to the camera for a long period of time and what I'm doing right now is I'm vlogging. Then B-roll is when you're doing something and the camera is recording you doing that and what you want to do in your videos is you want to mix all of them because it's going to make them dynamic and it's going to appear like everything's happening at once. Structure of free is what you're going to implement when just scripting and planning your videos. The way I do this is by highlighting different parts of my scripts with different colors. No color means B-roll, gray means A-roll, Brown means vlog. After finishing the whole script, I plan every shot I'm going to take in my shot list. I select the part of the video according to my script, describe the scene I have in my head so that I know what I have to do when it comes to recording, then I select the type of footage it's going to be and its location. The software I use here is Notion, it's not sponsored and if you want to get this script template for yourself then it's available for free in my free creator kit. It includes this Notion template, my two signature color grading LUTs, as well as my photo preset, the folder structure I use for every single one of my videos and my two YouTube lessons unavailable anywhere else. So if you're interested, click the first link in the description right now and download the free creator kit. As I said, it's 100% free, so just go get it. After finishing my script, I first record all the A-roll parts in one sitting, then I record the B-roll audio using the big microphone on my desk, and after I get to recording all the B-roll and vlog shots, I usually sort my shot list by location so that I don't have to waste time moving my setup around much and it goes way faster than if I were to constantly switch locations. As you progress in your cinematography, you could start adding more shots to your videos. So apart from only A-roll, vlog and B-roll, you could also start adding stuff like animations, maybe drone shots, and that way you could make your videos even more interesting. All of the possibilities that I use are listed in the Notion YouTube video template, but no matter if you film A-roll, B-roll, vlog, drone shots, anything that you use your camera for, Without proper lighting, your videos are going to look shit. So let's talk about lighting now. Cinematography is really just the art of using light properly. That's because the only thing your camera does is it collects the light it sees and converts it into files you can then watch. So really, whether your videos look professional and cinematic or not, is based purely on whether you manage your lighting properly or not. While it may seem like I don't pay attention to lighting when I vlog, I really do. So I'm going to show you the free lighting techniques I always use in every single one of my videos. The first technique I'm going to teach you is Rembrandt lighting. It is the most popular one on YouTube. It is basically a setup where you're going to take your main lamp, you're going to place it above your head and 45 degrees to the side so that you get a shadow under your jawline and a white triangle of light right here. This is what my setup looks like outside of the camera. I've got my camera right here, I've got my lamp here, then you've got one lamp there, second lamp there, and an important part of this is also the mirror that you can see right there, because it reflects this lamp from that side, and so you can see this backlight right here. And so I'm going to explain what backlight is in a second. 
Whenever your character is facing the camera, then you're going to use this Rembrandt lighting setup. The only problem with this setup is that you're probably going to need a softbox or a lamp for this. You could use a ring light, those that you can buy on Amazon or in Walmart at a cheap price, but what's going to be the best is going to be a softbox just like mine. And if you don't have that, then the second technique is going to be for you. And it is called the cinematic triangle. And I'm not talking about the triangle right here. What you're going to need for the cinematic triangle is only going to be one source of light. So that could be a window. This is mostly going to be used for profile shots. So imagine there is a window right here. You are right here and the camera is right here. This triangle in between the camera, you and the window is going to be the cinematic triangle. Of course, you don't have to do this next to a window. You can do this next to a lamp if you have one. You can do this outside, wherever you want. But you're going to notice this in most of my window shots. This technique is going to be very useful for you because it is super easy to set up. But my favorite technique that is even easier and that you can pull off in any lighting situation. So no matter if it's daytime, if it's shining, if it's cloudy, you can pull that off anywhere and it is the backlight technique. Is, as the name says, a technique where the lamp is right behind the subject. And most often, it is actually visible in the scene. So you're probably familiar with people taking photos of themselves with a sunset in the background. That is the backlight technique. I use the backlight technique mostly for shots that are shot from the back, so when the camera is literally behind me, but you can use this really for any kind of shot, just not for normal talking head videos because the face is going to be all dark. And as I said before, when shooting a roll, you can also use a backlight in addition to your main lamp. The way I do this is by having a mirror right there and so you can see how it reflects the light here. But if I want it go to an extreme level, then I could just turn on this lamp right here and now, as you can see, there's this huge backlight effect right here, which makes me stand out from the background even more. When you're just a YouTuber, the free lighting setups, Rembrandt, Cinematic Triangle and Backlight are going to be everything that you will ever need. And I give you my word, because all of the super viral videos I've had only used these free lighting techniques. So it's everything that you're ever going to need. I believe that scripting and filming are the hardest parts of making a cinematic masterpiece. After you finish that, the only thing that's left is editing. But don't lose your focus here, because this is where the real magic is going to happen. What pro cinematographers always do, but normal YouTubers always overlook, is managing viewers' mood. An example I always give my students is horror films. You know how when you watch them, you know that something scary is coming. When there's this silence, there's this build-up, there are different scary sound effects, there's loud music, and then something scary happens. Do you know what that is? That is viewer's mood management. When editing your videos, I really want you to ask yourself, what do I want the viewer to feel right now? Do I want to build up tension? Do I want to release tension? Do I want to make him feel inspired, motivated? Or do I want to make him feel sad? What you're going to use to give the viewer those emotions is going to be sound effects and music. You want to know the power of sounds? Remind yourself the last time you played Minecraft when you were in a cave and those scary cave sounds appeared. Remind yourself how scared you were back then. The sound effects you're going to need are going to be risers, impacts, and textures. And for music, it doesn't really matter what genre you use, but you're gonna have to pay attention to moods. Choose the music by the mood and not by the genre. While I can't give or sell you my sound effects or music because I don't own any rights to them, I can tell you where I get them from. And I get them from Epidemic Sound. This is not sponsored, but you can click my affiliate link down in the description. While I can't tell you exactly what to put where, because obviously I am not editing your videos, what you can do is you can copy what I do in my videos. 
so you can look at my hook, see how I build up the tension there and try to imitate the same thing in your videos. Do that for a longer period of time and I promise you that one day you are going to realize how to do this on your own and that's when your filmmaking game is really going to start. And so listen, if you don't want to be like all the creators on YouTube who can't even break through the 1000 subscribers mark, start applying the free techniques I taught you in this video and I can guarantee you that your cinematics will finally start getting views. Click the first link in the description to download my free creator kit to get my YouTube video template and much more. And remember, stop being a consumer and become the creator of your own reality.